we are watering the garden. It is August 8th, we're gone for uh, five days, so as you can tell, the vegetation, the vegetable garden, some of the things has pretty much taken over and on the pond. Now this fish, I haven't fed this fish for about a week, and I wasn't too worried about it because they have a lot of algae here. Especially being in uh, August, there's a lot of algae and the pond that they could, uh, they could eat. And it's generally actually good for them once in a while to clean out their system. So they're not being overfed because they are overfed when we get here. And uh, they do have some water hikes in there that they do eat. They see the here, so they're all out. And you can see the water hyacinths in the pot that we have here. We call these the reserve. Pot on here. Of course, I'm in there. If they used to destroy them, I can't see them all in there at once because they will destroy them. That's the next thing I want to work on for next year is really expand the bulk filtration and have more surface area for, uh, for the greeneries to suck up all the nutrients from the water. We did have a lot of rain in the last few days. And let me just show you my filter box. It's kind of noisy, so I'm not going to talk while I'm there, but show you that it's um, got pretty filthy and dirty. So I'm going to clean those out. But you can see the green things on there. So we're going to change that. Yeah, this is how the pond look, is looking like on August 8th. There's a couple of things in here that I still don't like. So we're gonna have to change it. We have to reconfigure this uh, vegetable garden area a little bit for next year. I do like the idea of having a vegetable garden in there. And luckily enough, I haven't had to put my UV sterilizer light uh, have not had an algae bloom and I think part of it's because we raised that area up with the green here so we do have a lot of shade there you can see that's what it looks like
this November 10th. It's 32 degrees outside. Okay, cleaned it up a bit. So we get some more fleets up here. This water is cold. You can see the ice that's falling right there. November 17th and we got a lot of snow last night still snowing a little bit today this year I've decided to run my filter and my pump for the pond running for the first time and see how it does and I do still have the Laguna pressurized filter running and that covered up just in case a couple of days ago, I did decide to cover most of the pond back with that uh, polyethylene uh, cover, plastic cover, just to keep some of the heat in. Uh, so I did decide to still have the pond filter in the pond only. So I want to see how much heat we can keep in there. Last year I did cover this up and I did shut the pond and that water never froze on top so I'm guessing that um, it's probably going to be the same this year. Just for an extra precaution we did wrap it to see how it goes. Do what I can to keep that water as warm as possible. I do have a 315 watt de-icer plugged in that's running right now just in case and over there somewhere I do have another 3000 watt de-icer uh, that one's not plugged in that's just on a standby in the event that my 315 uh, stops working or if it's not enough but last year um, I didn't even run the de-icer and the water was uh, wasn't frozen at all so what I have running here is the uh, 2,000 gallon per hour pump. That's the same setup that's still going to my filter box. Obviously the bug plants are gone. But it seems to be okay as long as we have constant running. From the research that I have read, they said that it should be fine as long as you have um, at least 2,000 gallons per hour pump that's running so that the water flow is uh, higher that shouldn't have any problems with the uh, water pushing on the line so I have 3,000 gallons per hour pump so I get a lot of turn on that water but I do need to keep an eye on that to make sure that there's no ice building up there when it's happening and then on that corner over there we have um, the bubbler but that's uh, how it's looking today on November 17, 2018 although uh, we're getting a lot of snow it's not that cold out so the water's not frozen yet so I think I'm gonna top this off bit of fresh water and top off the pond.
Today is January 5th, 2019, and it is 40 degrees outside. And here's our course. Right now, we're topping off the pond with some fresh water. And here's our toy pond on January 17, 2019. And there's my mom. Anyways, and then there's my dad's back of his head. And there's my mom. There's my dad. Look at our koi pond, guys. This is what it looks like after a snowstorm that happened last night. And as you can see, the filter is still running. It is January 21st right now. We've had a single digit temperature in the evening last few days. And so I've been a little bit nervous about the pond because we do have that pump at the bottom. And if we ever create some sort of ice dam or some water that escapes the pond, that could drain that pond within hours. So when it warms up a little bit, um, you're going to have to probably uh, go to that corner over there and um, pull my pump up. It's on a rope. so. I can pull it up maybe just a foot below the surface that would at least ensure that if water does escape uh, it will only drain about a foot from the top and that will still give about three and a half feet of water so that uh, the clay will be fine and it gives me something to really think about whether I should uh, continue to run the pump at all through the winter or um, maybe not. It doesn't really benefit anything running it or not. I don't think so. So maybe for next winter, I'll just shut it off. And then I don't have to really worry about it. Because right now, it does need a constant monitoring. Um, I'm in my dining room looking at this right now. So I'm going to open the window. It's kind of loud, so I won't be able to hear anything. But you can see, I'm going to show you in that section that it's built up. Um, a lot of ice on that uh, box filter and then uh, over down there too you can see that uh, there's a lot of ice on there let's open the window I couldn't get to the back patio door in the front. So I had to hop over this uh, neighbor fence. You see, it's, uh, it's just frozen. It's the backyard. Just wanted to see, just from outside the window. Uh, you can see that it's uh, solid frozen. So I wanted to see if I. Uh, Going down there, the de-icing seems to be working, so I think we're okay there. And I do have a small pump there running. It is March 7th, 2019. Uh, it's pretty cold out here, but the weather temperature said it's like uh, 20 degrees. 
Alright, so. It is March 20th. It's got to be about 40, 50 degrees outside. We're going to wait for a nice sunny day. It's been kind of cloudy and rainy the whole day. And I can uh, remove that, uh, that covering. And get these guys to uh, start getting active again. These are all the vegetations from uh, last season. We're gonna clear that up and clean it up before I take off the cover so that it doesn't get into the pond. All right, we cleaned up that area. It's getting late right now, so tomorrow I'm gonna peel back that cover. The pressurized pump, uh, it's underneath there. And it's been running uh, all winter. Try to insulate it as much as I could. Well, it's still running. Let's peel the rest of the cover off. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take out and turn up those de-icers. So that's how it's looking right now. One thing that I wasn't sure about to survive there was uh, these irises in place of the milk crates I'm actually gonna put this uh, plastic shelving units and you know I will measure it and then we'll just probably have to cut some of those legs to uh, make up the height so that's equal to the surface of the pond so that we can put the pot and any other type of plants and pot on top of it but um, as you can see, uh, using these shelving units, uh, we actually don't lose a lot of the real estate because fish could seem, swim through there. And actually, uh, after I do that, I'm going to plan to put on the pump on the upper portion of the shelf because I'm always worried that um, if there's some leak, it could drain the pond within half an hour or so by putting it up higher this much um, if we do start draining the pond and, and there's some leakage in some of the plumbing it would only drain the water up to that point okay. that's one thing I, that I thought about over the winter the object of the game is for me to balance through there get on my belly and trim that iris and I win the game if I don't fall in. Not too crazy about all those edges. So I'm going to redo the top portions. And uh, Although it looks natural, I like to have a little bit of a controlled chaos. So I'm going to remove those and rework the top portion of, uh, of the pond. Okay, move some of the upper portions and I still need to work on that side but this side is somewhat done. These heating cables, I put that on right before winter 
Um, I was wanted to see if it would help a little bit. I have that in there, uh, going in that section, and also coming in from the intake pump. Really didn't help, so I'm gonna remove that because I don't think it did anything. And one thing I did notice is that that connection over there that's coming from the pump going to the first underground filter it's busted right here it's cracked which is fine because this spring I was gonna redo this a bit anyway and get rid of that it's too much of a long run from that section being outside there's a lot of things that could potentially happen I think could crack and I could drain the pond so what I think I'm gonna do is do a connection here and make it go this way directly to the pond here and then just have um, flexible tubing going all the way down there to where the pump is going to be so I'm going to shorten the exterior run so now I'm going to remove this useless heating cables that really didn't work I don't see any cracks here, so... This is uh, the milk break inside the pond that we have the pot on top of. So, I'm kind of transfer that height into that. I'll cut it so that it's in the same height. And then we'll put that uh, rack inside the pond. One of the reasons I wanted to take this out is one, it's a bit wobbly, and second, we kind of lose real estate because that's closed off. With the new racks, the fish could swim in between. And I'm also thinking of putting the pump up here higher so that in the event there's a leak or uh, somewhere, it won't totally uh, drain the pond water will stop whatever that level is here so it gives him a good 18 inches until I can fill the pond again I've got um, the legs to make it shorter so it's the same height as the previous one that we've had before and then uh, we're gonna put this in the pond The shelf is on there, and the iris is back. Just put some rocks there right now to kind of weigh it down. But I think we got two more space over there for uh, two more clients. Now back to this thing. I thought it was just going to be a, an easy fix, and I'll run it through here and pump it uh, from that section. And I'm actually planning on putting in the pump on that second shelf. But the more I look at it, it looks like it also cracked here. Got this whole crack area here. I don't know what happened. I think it was probably from the heating cable. So what I'm going to have to do is remove this for now. Probably do a cut somewhere up here. And come through here. Nice. At least uh, you guys get to see what this whole set of is. These are all lava rocks. And that's one of the reasons I put these in bags. Because when I do clean it, take it out, it's so much easier. Just pull it. That's what that looks like. Pretty easy setup water comes through here comes down there and I kind of just split it up there nice and clean and as you can see I mean, there's nothing spectacular about this uh, filter box it's just a barrel with an outlet with a two inch outlet and this is basically how it's uh, set up in there yeah. you don't seem like that it's pretty simple I added another about two inches of block 
up there to give it a little bit of a of height. Because when I had it before, this one was uh, not going too much in the sun. It was much closer to that side. So I, I think with the, with the additional height, that gives it a little bit more uh, sun there. There's the crack piece that I had to cut. There's the pump. Cleaning it up a bit. Okay, finished putting all the pipings together. So that's where gonna be the new intake is. It's a short run now. It's going through here, going up the first barrel, going all the way down. And that's how I have that connection at the bottom. Put a little, some elbow there to make it swirl around the clockwise. And then that's gonna be filled up to the top. Uh, with lava rocks probably right about right there so then we can still put the bog plants and before I put all that stuff together I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint the barrels outside at least something that nature to help camouflage it a little bit just the outside piping and same thing with that one before I put it together and then I'm gonna have the pump. This one right here. Connect to that bottom section. It's threaded. And we're gonna put that pump right there in that second shell. So you can see right here, this threading. That's where I'm gonna thread the flexible hose from the pump. Then it goes in here, water goes in up up into the barrel and then distributes and then there are 90 degrees elbows on three of those corners to give it that swirl effect that I took it out for now I'm gonna do a little bit of painting on the outside I also don't like that spout uh, going into the pond like that. It's not centered, and it's kind of going in the angle, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit and put some uh, PVC connections. That's what I have. I'm going to do some cutting and some um, gluing for the new waterfall. Okay, there it is. All cut, put together, and uh, pipe weld. And that's what the new connections will be coming in from the Laguna. And let this dry and tomorrow I'm gonna paint it and set it in place and at the end there you can see I have it in an angle not a 90 degrees just so that I can push some of the waters towards the center okay so I got the pump hooked up and we're gonna put it in the water I'm gonna make an effort to put that pump on the second shelf but here's the connections water going in We got the pump in, it's on that second shelf. There's the pump going in here. And the water's gonna come down here. And over there, at the bottom. And then we're gonna fill it up with a lava rock for the biological filtration. We'll probably stop somewhere right around here. And then we're gonna put some bog plants up above. So now I'm gonna Clean the filter. This filter's been here all winter. But we're gonna clean this up. 
And you can see I'm not replacing or throwing these away. I'm using the same ones. And the foam is still in good shape. So let's clean those up. So this is the second barrel. As you can see, it's just gravity fed. This is acts more as a mechanical filter where we have all those foams. But in the middle there, I have this bucket. And in this bucket, this is where I usually put uh, some barley straw to get rid of that. And then we're gonna put a new one in. And I usually have some uh, all kinds of foam in here. Uh, there's another barley straw. I'll usually put some carbon filter in here. And I think this year, doing a little bit of research, I'm going to add some um, coral, crushed coral or oyster shell to control the pH. But that's where it goes, right there. Put in the filter pad right there. Another one. Foam, more for uh, biological bacteria. And then I'm gonna put two more pads of filter pads. Now, as I mentioned before, these filter pads, these are buffing pads from Home Depot. You go to re any rental section, Ace Hardware, you can buy this for about four bucks. It's a perfect size for my drum. Then I'm just gonna put this in the edges. And I'm just gonna put this basket in to help a little bit. Um, that's all I'm gonna do for now. As you notice, I didn't put the lava rocks yet. The reason is, it's pond water. It's a bit murky, and you can see a lot of those uh, algae are uh, coming loose. So I'm gonna have to run this for about a week without it getting rid of all the debris and all the dead leaves from the fall and winter. I'm going to catch it all up. So most likely daily I'm going to be cleaning these pads. Once uh, we do the initial maintenance, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the rocks. One of the reasons I don't put, put it in here now is because it's just going to trap a lot of those big debris. So, so we're going to turn it on for the first time and test for leaks. Hopefully it works. Alright, let me run the pump and we can see it together, see if uh, we need to make any adjustments. Okay. I think it's pumping. Let's see if the water's filling up. Hey, it's filling up. You can see already there's a lot of debris that's uh, getting pumped from the pond. So let's see. We adjusted this height a little bit, one more block, so to give us a little bit more height on the waterfall. And it also helped with aeration. Give it a little bit more. Ooh, that's kind of nice, huh? This is the other spot that we made. And it, that's gonna go in here in between those. So this is what I got done yesterday. Yesterday was almost 70 degrees, bright and sunny. Today is 30 degrees, and yes, that's ice falling right there, and it's going to be uh, snowing. You guys can hear all that ice, so that's the temperature weather difference that could occur here in Chicago overnight. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do any type of work today, but that's how the about waterfall came out when I was building it. So there's not much I can do today. Let's 
so I did a little bit of work today. Don't watch that back wall. Looks a lot better than how I did before. Just gotta get rid of a, do something with those rocks. I don't like that too much, but again, kind of level this area off as well as that. All right, this is what I got done today. We will hit it again tomorrow. But I like how those rear flagstones are stacked and well even. And I started working on this side, the top portion, with those boulders. Uh, they're heavy, the back's killing me, so. Yesterday was a beautiful day. I was able to complete a lot of the rock work around the edging of the pond. And I was hoping to complete the landscaping portion so that I can go ahead and put in my media on the filter boxes but today April 14th temperature outside is 32 degrees and dark and gloomy and it's gonna be snowing all day um, I don't think the snow is gonna stick but as you can see it's coming down pretty pretty hard and it's gonna be like this the entire day so I don't think I'm gonna be able to work on the pond today. Today is April 14th and it is like in the 30s and it's snowing. It's going to be snowing for the whole day so I don't think my dad's going to be working on the pond. And these are what I use. Kind of have a duty mesh laundry bag. Fill it out with some laundry rocks. I'm gonna take this out for now because I really don't have any plants. And that's how it's going. You can see it's the best way to chase the water. Okay, I just shut up the pump right now so you guys could see it. As you can see, the barrel is a lot higher than the pond, so. Uh, theoretically, all that water should be suctioning back to the pond, and that's what it's doing. See that barrel's emptying out, all that water is pouring back to the pond right there. Uh, and this is what I would do in the winter time, and then I would just leave everything alone. And the beauty of that is that then this barrel will be really empty, then I don't have to worry about an uh, expansion of the, of the ice. Uh, breaking the barrel and see so it hits the bottom you can see that it's fully empty it's going back there I turn it off so that I could uh, give you a little bit of a quick update on where we're at with the koi pond build we're gonna go over some of the adjustments that I made that we've learned from uh, from last year that didn't work out quite. Oh, hold on. Hey, you heard that noise that's all the water emptying out into the pond so this barrel is uh, actually totally empty and if it's shutting up for the winter I would just leave it like that it's perfect because there is no water in here and that's how we would close it and I would clean it up again next spring and reopen it but for now for the sake so that you guys could hear me I shut up the, the main pump right now it's May 11th right now 
and we're still like 48, 47 degrees out here. Uh, the season has been kind of slow, warming up so far. The effect of the polar vortex that we were hit with this winter. Even with our gardening, we are about five, six weeks behind. So the rock work, I'm happy with, and it's gonna stay that way, I think. We just made a little bit of a fine tuning. Now with the barrel, I actually added another block and raised this up. So it's a little bit higher on the second barrel. And what it does for me is when the water goes in, it gives me a higher uh, waterfall to hit on the second barrel and it gives it more aeration. And then with the aeration going there and then the full force of coming out that way, we have plenty of aeration that's all needed for that pond. Okay, so let's talk about some of the plants that I have um, on the pond. That's access kind of a filtration system also. The bog filters, we got the iris. And then I'm trying to grow some horsetail over here. And then on that is uh, some young uh, cat's tail. So we'll see how that goes. This first time I'm trying it, so we'll see. Um, and on this spot, uh, oh, and look, they're sprouting. Those are some uh, taro bulbs that I've put in there. And we'll have separate videos on that. The cheap way how to do that is to just buy it from a Asian supermarket. You can probably, I, you can probably get them at like, I don't know, 39 cents a pound. So, and they're basically taro bulbs. We've got some iris over here. Uh, there's some water hyacinth here that I'm trying to grow. I keep it in here because the koi eats them. So once in the hot summer days, this is multiplying and I just usually just pick one or two and throw it in the pond and they'll nibble out until it's gone. And then I'll go get another one there. So kind of helps them with their diet too because any, any plants in there, they'll end up eating all of them. And some of my uh, perennial uh, plants are coming up too over here. Uh, and then I did buy a couple of uh, small creeping jennies so that eventually we'll see uh, they're just gonna creep through these rocks it looks more natural we got one here one there and then one in that corner over right there now this is our organic garden we grew tomatoes in here peppers uh, and cucumbers and we had a huge harvest it was beautiful it was healthy but one of the problems that I didn't like with it was it just got to be too crazy too much and too high and the tomatoes just took over in the vine so it looked really messy up here and I wanted to have a little bit more of a cleaner look so this season the only thing that I'm planting here vegetables are uh, peppers different types of pepper green peppers bell peppers um, sweet banana peppers um, vegetables that we typically eat and uh, I did put some more horse tail over here I'm trying to grow them uh, that's temporarily Let's see how they do it's hard to find it in my area, so I had to buy those uh, online. And um, this giant bulb right there, we'll see if it grows. It's a malanga. Again, I bought it from an Asian market, and we'll see if it grows. It's a, a little bit larger version of the taro plant, so if it does, it'll be a nice height in this area. And we have some Japanese sweet flags over here. And that's how it's looking here. And I do really like how the rock forms layer that I'm happy with that and that's just a cheap um, LED one light from Menards it's enough to light the pond when we need to and I have a remote control on that I hooked up so I can control it from inside the house as you can see we've added that uh, just completed that about uh, a couple of weeks ago again to uh, PVC that I just painted production I'll show you the the connections from the back this is how it looks in the back and that's just coming from the, from the Laguna pressurized filter um, and this actually ran throughout winter time I just put a cover on here and it was fine so uh, I did this has been running all year round including the winter time so it was kind of nice and I'm trying to hide it a little bit up here with some height but we will need to uh, put some cover on this during the winter time as you can see in the previous videos, this is actually how we water the plants, uh, multi-purpose. When we do want to top off the water, change some of the waters, uh, we reverse this and pump it. And the exhaust comes here and it's perfect uh, for watering the plants here. And we still need to uh, finish up this walkway landscaping here. You see it's a bit messy. 
I'm also trying to grow some uh, papyrus. These are um, the dwarf variety of King Tut. We'll see how it does. Uh, these are marginal plants, but I would have to take them in inside the house during the, the winter time. I do have a, a UV sterilizer, but I don't think I need to hook it up from, uh, from last year if I use the same method. I should have a, a green clear water for the rest of the season. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump again so you can see. The water should be pumping right now. The barrel is filling up. And the beauty of it is that you can also see it doesn't quite reach up there. It's just, that's just by accident. I didn't have to do any calculations or anything. So this is the species of elephant ear that we had on the bog filter last year that grew like, I don't know, 10 feet. If you looked at our other videos on that bog filter, you can see what these plants look like. This is a type of elephant ears, and um, I only got this at Lowe's. The one I got last year is also from Lowe's. Uh, the one that I like has a purplish stem like this. You can see the veinings are purple, but it's green. Um, I'm not sure what species of elephant ear this is, but if you do know, please let me know because I really like this one. It grows quite big. Uh, I tried to winterize it last year, the one that we had in the bog filter because that was giant. I think the bulb is turned to this size. So I'm going to transplant that on the pot and then we're going to put it on the barrel. Put some landscaping fabrics in here so that um, covers up some of the those larger holes and then on top of that I'm gonna put some some planting media and then we'll put that plant in there and all those root balls I'm gonna keep all those roots intact because we want to encourage more root growing then we're gonna go ahead and put some uh, plant media that should be good. There's uh, some space over here. I'm gonna put some uh, some rocks in there, lava rocks, to prevent um, some of these uh, media from floating around. Okay, so I just top up the pond. I really don't do any water change. And if I do, it's because I water the plant with the water in here. Uh, and then I just top it back up. But I'm sure these guys are hungry, so I'm gonna go inside and feed them through the window. Hey guys. Hey guys. How you doing, buddy? Hmm? Watch my dad fall. It'll go viral. <laughs> <laughs> 